about uh, inventory control subject to deterministic demand. And uh, a short repetition first. Um, no. About this uh, simple EOQ model, which is the well, basis for uh, mostly all models we will look at in, in this course regarding inventory control. Uh, it's some kind of balance between the ordering cost and the holding cost, cost of storing inventory. And uh, it is uh, when you have the fixed or deterministic demand, you have a situation like this, you have a fixed demand rate. The rate of demand will go in the uh, in w with the same speed over time. So you will start here at a maximum level of inventory, and you will use until you reach zero inventory. And then you should plan with a new delivery, and the cycles will continue like this. The cycle time is the time between two deliveries of uh, of this uh, item, and the EOQ formula looks like this, economic order quantity, also called the Wilson's formula. It is two times the ordering cost, the cost of placing one order, multiplied by the annual demand or eventually any other time period, usually this is the annual demand, and divided by the holding cost. And this is also, if this parameter is per year, this also has to be per year. You have to make sure that you're using the same time period for these two parameters. Uh, and then take the square root of this expression and find the optimal order size in the simple EOQ uh, situation. Uh, here we can see the cost curve with the two, uh, in this case, the two uh, most relevant uh, cost elements. One is the holding cost, the cost of storing inventory, which is a straight line, linear function. And the other is the cost or the ordering cost, cost for placing orders, which will decrease and will be a hyperbolic curve, will decrease over uh, when you look at the order size here. So when you have a very high order size, you have a very low ordering cost. But then you will have a higher hauling cost because you are storing so much. Uh, the EOQ value or the optimal Q value will be at the intersection where these two cost functions are exactly equal. And you can also see that at the end point or the, the minimum point of the total cost function here will be at the intersection between these two cost factors. When you have a production situation, it will be slightly different because you have a situation where you are producing, but the consumption will also continue in the production time. So you need uh, to adjust the holding cost by the expression here. The annual holding cost multiplied by 1 minus the annual demand divided by the annual uh, production rate. Um, and then, otherwise, the EOQ or the EPQ, economic production quantity function, will be similar to the EOQ function, except that you have to adjust this H value. And this is because you have the situation which now looks like this. You have production a production time, you're producing yourself, you will use some time for that production. If the production is very fast, it will be close to an ordering situation. But if you will use some time uh, for production, you need to produce the, uh, the uh, decided number of, uh, of uh, items. And then you will stop production. So you have what you call the up time period here, where you are producing, and the down time period here, where you are only consuming. And since you are also consuming in the production time or the up time, you will actually never reach a stock level of Q, but you will have a maximum level of the stock, which is the capital H in this case, which is the Order, uh, it's the order size Q multiplied by the fraction you will find by subtracting the demand rate divided by the production rate from 1. 
And if the production rate is lower than the demand rate, then this will be an infeasible problem because you are not able to produce as much as you need to meet the demand. So here we have to assume that the production rate will be higher than the demand rate. Uh, and we looked at different types. And uh, let's now go back to the this one. We looked at, uh, uh, at least we started last week, looking at the all unit discount type. Uh, we also mentioned uh, this other type of discount, which is called the incremental discount. Difference between these two discount types is that here, with the all unit discount, you will have a breakpoint, in this case 500, and also a new breakpoint at 1000. And uh, th at this breakpoint, when you are producing, uh, when you are ordering more than this particular number, you will get a lower price. And then you can see that the total cost is lower at this point, so instead of buying 499, which will give a total cost up here, you should buy one extra and get a total cost which is even lower, because the price for all units will now be lower than when you are ordering less than 500. The incremental quantity discount is uh, the opposite, which looks like this. You are paying the same price for the first 500 in this case. And then when you are buying more than 500, you will get a lower price for those in excess of 500. And if you are buying even more than 1000, you will get a lower price for those again. So here you have a fixed price for the first 500. You have a fixed price for the next 500, but that will be lower than this price. And then you will have an even lower price per unit for those in excess for of, uh, of the second breakpoint. Here is the cost curve for the all unit cost discount. Less than 500, you have a cost curve which looks like this at the bottom line here. Uh, bottom here, the optimal order size. When you're ordering more than 500, you will get a new price. The new price will also give another cost curve, but this will not be a possible price if you are not buying uh, enough or to meet that particular breakpoint. So even if the uh, optimal value for that price is below the breakpoint here, you have to increase the order to reach the breakpoint. And that will also be the same here. Uh, when you are using the price for, a 1, 000, for the breakpoint of 1000, you will have a minimum order or an optimal order size at this point, but you have to increase the order to reach that particular value, which is equal to the breakpoint, to get that price. For the incremental quantity discount, you will have a continuous line here, which will follow this ball line for up to 500, and then you will meet another cost curve and continue with that cost curve, and then you will meet another cost curve at the second breakpoint and continue with that cost curve. But here, you can see that the minimum or the optimal order size is either at this point or at this point. But for the third cost curve, the minimum point is here, which is outside the scope of that price. And then this is not a relevant option for the optimal policy. So in this case, this example, we have only two possible options of the optimal policy where we need to compare the cost for these two options. So, I, uh, last week I showed one example on the all unit discount. I will show one more example before I continue with the incremental quantity uh, discount. And here we uh, will look at the uh, problem 422 on page 226 in the textbook. We have uh, here, let's see. A problem of uh, buying uh, 
uh, silicon wafers used in the production of semiconductors and we must decide among three different sources. So here we have actually three different producers which have different conditions but the problem is similar to buying from one single producer and get, uh, uh, and get a discount for a certain uh, size of the order. So you have the price of 250 at one of the producers, you have the price of 240 for another one and at 230 for a third one. But then one will only accept order for 3000 and more and another one for 4000 and more. And we have the demand of 20,000 per year and you also have the ordering or the setup cost of 100 per order. And we assume a 20% annual interest rate for holding cost calculations. So here we should find out what source should be used and what is the size of the standing order. So let's now try to summarize this problem. Uh, we have a demand of 20,000, the lambda here, the de annual demand is 20,000. We have a K value, ordering cost 100. We have a interest rate 20%. And we have a price, unit cost, which has t three different options. The C of Q is 2.50 if you buy from the first producer. It is 2.40 if you buy for the second producer. But then you need to buy at least 3000 units. And you have the third option, 230 at the third producer. but then you have to buy at least 4,000 units. So this, I this is now the, the function which shows the three different options of the price. And what we should do now, since this is an all unit discount situation, we should find the optimal order size for these three prices. The minimum point or the optimal point for the three cost curves here. So let's now first check the what we call the Q0, which is at a price of 2.50. It is uh, 2 multiplied by the demand and the setup cost, the ordering cost. 2 multiplied by 20,000 multiplied by 100 divided by the interest rate of 20% and multiplied by the price. The holding cost is, as known, the internal interest rate multiplied by the price, which is the price of storing one unit of inventory for one year. So for the first option, we use the price of 2.50, which will of course, we should take the square root, and this will give us an optimal order size of 2,828. And then, second option, if the price is 2.40, let's call that the Q number one, since this is alternative zero, this is alternative one, the first discount option. And all the parameters are the same except this one. Now we rather than dividing by a price of 250, we should divide by the price of 240. All the other parameters are the same. So this will give us an optimal order size of 2887. And this is smaller than the breakpoint, which is 3000, which means we need to buy 3000 to get that price. 
if we should use this um, this vendor here, we should um, buy at the price of 240, but then we need to buy 3,000 items. And similar for the third option or the second discount option, we will use the same formula, use the price of 230, all the other parameter values are the same. Then we get an optimal order size of 2,949 which is smaller than the breakpoint, which in this case is 4,000. So now we have these three possible options, which all can be the optimal order size with the situation where you have a discount. Either 2,828 from the first vendor without a discount or with a price of 250, or 3,000 at the second vendor at a price of 240, or 4,000 at the third vendor at a price of 230. <coughs> and then we need to compare the costs. Use the cost function for a Q value. And then the cost function, as usual, includes the, the ordering cost which is the annual demand divided by Q multiplied by the holding cost A and the average size of the stock, which is one half of the order size, multiplied by the holding cost, which is VI or CI in this case. I always use the wrong parameter, but the here the, the price is the C and the interest rate is the I. So the holding cost is the average size of the stock multiplied by the holding cost per unit, which is the value or the price of the item multiplied by the annual interest rate. But now, since this is a situation with discounts, we need to include the third part of the cost function which is a constant when you don't have a discount, but now it is relevant because the price of the, of the product will depend on the order size. So here, this will be the annual demand multiplied by the C, the price per unit. And then we can use this formula with an order size of 2,828. We, yeah, of course, I'm teaching also a master course on this topic, and then we have other parameters. So this is, of course, the demand, which now is the lambda, and the holding cost, uh, or the ordering cost is the k parameter. Q is the same, of course. So this is the demand divided by the order size, which will give you how many orders you should place per year and multiplied by the cost per order. And the demand is 20,000. The cost per order is 100. Q, in this case, 2,828. Ordering cost, one half of, uh, holding cost, one half of the order size, multiplied by the price of 250, if you're using this vendor and this order size, and multiplied by 20%, plus the annual demand of 20,000 multiplied by the price of 250. This gives us a total cost of uh, 51,414. The cost function of using an order size of 3,000. Then we need to change this value, Q. The demand and the order, uh, ordering cost is the same. The holding cost will now be still 20%, but now the C value and the Q value has to be changed according to the first uh, cost uh, option here. Uh, so now we will use a Q value of 3000 and a C value of 2.40, and also the annual demand still 20,000, but 
use a value uh, of the product or the cost price of 240. This gives us now a total cost of 49,387. And similar, let's try the third alternative, buy from the third vendor at the price of 2.30, but then you have to buy at least 4,000 units. So find the price, uh, find the, the, the cost function when buying 4,000 4, units. Use the same formula, use fourth Q value of 4,000 and a C value of 2.30 and we will get a cost of 47,420 which is the optimal cost here we are co uh, we are now comparing the possible options of optimal policy and in this case the lowest cost is this alternative buying 4000 units at a price of 2.30 which will be a significantly lower cost than the two other options. What is uh, also important to know is that uh, the holding cost and the ordering cost, which we have seen in the EOQ formula should be exactly equal, will not anymore be the same when you are using uh, discounts because you have to buy more units than you actually would ideally to get a lower price and then you should usually have a higher price uh, a higher cost of storing inventory because you have to increase the order size and you have to store more units than you actually would have done if you have been able to, to choose the order size by yourself and not have these constraints of a minimum order size so in this case, let's see that the ordering cost will be nine. No, uh, the, it will be five hundred for the ordering cost in the optimal situation here, because the K value is one hundred. You have a demand of twenty thousand and ordering. 4,000 each time means that 20,000 divided by 4,000 is 5. You have to place 5 orders in one year and each of them will cost you 100. So uh, the annual ordering cost will here be 500. The annual holding cost will be one half of 4,000 which is 2,000 multiplied by 2.30 and multiplied by 20%, which will be a total of 920. So here the holding costs are almost twice as high as the setup cost. But the main part is this part. The main part of the cost function is actually the purchase cost here, which is much higher than the other two options of, of the, uh, or the other two parts of, of the cost function. Okay, that was the, that was the, uh, yeah. Excuse me, I have two yep. general questions about sure. the EOQ model. Yeah. Um, I read somewhere that uh, the model is uh, 100 years old. Yeah. And it was uh, first kind of published in 1913. Yeah, you're right. Uh, is that by the engineer, engineer Paul Wilson? Uh, is that by mm. Paul Wilson? Model? It was actually published first in 1913 by a guy called Harris. But this Wilson guy, he was the one who first started to use it extensively and, and to prove it uh, well, uh, a bit more than the, the general proof, I think. Uh, th that was in the 30s, as far as I know. Yeah. So uh, is it the fact that uh, the model first started to uh, get popular in the 80s? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Well, I, I think it was uh, in the 30s when Wilson started using it. It was uh, it's, uh, it's some kind of, uh, well, how, ma how would you measure the popularity? Because to use it extensively, then it uh, might have been even more popular in, in the newer time. But in the 30s, it was, was quite well known by people working with inventory management and so on. So. But of course, this is the basic model. And uh, always in, in real life, you will have lots of other constraints and things uh, you have to uh, 
uh, to consider and uh, it's very rare that you have this very simple situation where you can use the EOQ model but it is the basis for the more advanced model which we also will look at later in in this course okay and then this was the the first type of discounts I will not go go more into details on that one because I also have to present the incremental quantity discount this si or let's see the situation here here where you have the discount a lower price for the number of units in excess of the breakpoint so you will pay the same for the first batch of 500 in this case and then you will pay the same for the next batch here between 500 and 1000 with a lower price and then if you are ordering more than 1000 you will get an even lower price and then it's a bit more complex to try to find the unit price the price per unit which we need to find when we should calculate the optimal policy so also here I will uh, show an example from the uh, textbook first uh, and then we'll see what we have time to do probably not today but uh, uh, anyway this is also something you will have to treat in in the next assignment I will present assignment 3 in the uh, later uh, today when we will go more into details on on the different types of uh, the different problems in assignment 3 <coughs> So here, let's now look at the situation where we have a discount for the amount exceeding the breakpoints. And then, if you use the same example as in the textbook, we have a price of uh, the order, which is uh, to be seen as the C of Q. Now the price is dependent on the size of the order. And in the first case, which is also the where this figure is taken from, you have to pay 30 cents per unit. And then multiply by the order size. <coughs> and then this will happen if you're ordering less than or equal to. In this case, we should also include 500. So you will have the price of 30 cents for the first 500 in an order or if, if you are ordering less than 500 you have to pay 30 cents so this is the case if q is smaller than or equal to 500 which is the breakpoint second option you're ordering between 500 and 1000 in one order then you'll have to pay 30 cents for the first 500 But you also have to add 29 cents for those in excess of 500. The difference between the order size and 500. And this will happen if Q is larger than 500 but smaller than or equal to 1000. And the third option if you're ordering more than 1,000, then you still have to pay 30 cents multiplied by 500. And then you have to pay 29 cents for the difference between the two breakpoints, which is 1,000 <coughs> minus 500. Of course, this is 500. And at last, you have to pay 28 cents for those in excess of the second breakpoint, 1,000. Like this. So this is now the three different options. And we can also, 
This is, of course, if Q is larger than 1,000. <coughs> and uh, we can just say that uh, the C of Q will now be 0, no, 0 0.30 multiplied by Q for the first option. And if we simplify the second expression here, we have 0 0.30 multiplied by 500, which is 150. <coughs> and then we get uh, uh, 150 and plus Q minus 500 multiplied by 0 0.29, which means we get 150 minus 145, which is 5. And 0 0.29 Q plus 5. And we can do the similar here, just simplify the expression here. And we find that this is 0 0.28 Q plus 15. Just simplify the expression here and you will find these values for the cost of one order. And what we now want to do is to find the unit price. Because this is quite important. The unit price is what we should use in the cost function. And now we don't have one particular value for the unit price, but we have an expression for the unit price. Unit price is the cost per order, C of Q, divided by the Q value. The cost divided by the number of unit, the unit price, which in this case will be 0 0.30 for the first option, 0 0.29 plus 5 divided by Q for the second option, and 0 0.28 plus 15 divided by Q for the third option. This is the expression for the unit price which we now should use in the cost function to try to determine the optimal policy in the incremental quantity uh, situation. So let's keep the unit price and erase the rest here, because this is just used to find the expression for the unit price. Uh, and let's now resume. This is the same example as we used in the uh, first example uh, last week for the incremental, uh, no, for the all, uh, all unit cost. We have a demand of 600. We have an ordering cost of 8. And we have an interest rate of 20%. This is given. And now we have to find the average annual cost. Find the average annual cost for each of the three examples here, each of the three unit prices. And we have the cost function, which looks like this. G, dependent on the order size Q. It is the demand divided by the order size, multiplied by the ordering cost, as, us uh, as usual. It is the average size of the stock, one half of the order size, multiplied by, we are used to use the C value here, but now the C, which is uh, the unit price, will now be dependent on the order size, at least in two of the three uh, alternatives here. So we have to multiply this by the C of Q divided by Q, and multiply by the interest rate. And we need to include the purchase cost, the annual demand multiplied by the unit price. 
C of Q divided by Q. So the cost function is the same, but instead of using one particular value for the unit price, we might have to use an expression as shown here, because the unit price is dependent on the order size Q. <coughs> um, for the first option, this is quite easy. The unit price is 30 cents. If you are ordering less than 500 units, the unit price is 30 cents. So here, in this case, let's call it the Q of zero, is equal to two lambda K divided by I and C, where the unit price is 30 cents. Let's call that the C zero and of course the square root. This will give us an optimal order size of 400. And by using an order size of 400 and a unit price of 30 cents, we can easily find that the G of 400 is equal to 204. This is the same as we saw uh, with the first example by using the all unit uh, discount. Order size of 400 will give us a cost function of 204. Use, uh, use the unit price of 30 cents in this function here. <coughs> this is quite straightforward if we, if we know the, uh, the way of calculating the the EOQ value and also the, uh, the cost function. But now we have to look at the second option here, this option. Order between 500 and 1,000 units in one order. And then we have an expression for the unit price. We don't have a fixed unit price. We cannot just put in a value here and get a result out. So now we need to find the optimal or the expression for the optimal order size when you are in the scope of the price here and get the unit price with this expression. So let's now see what's happening if we are using the expression for the unit price in the cost function. <coughs> then we will look at what we can call the G alternative one of Q. Uh, we have lambda divided by Q multiplied by K. Lambda is 600. Q is still the variable. We don't know it. We want to find it. K is eight ordering cost plus the holding cost in this expression, one half multiplied by the variable Q, multiplied by the expression for the unit cost, found here 0 0.29 plus five divided by Q. and multiplied by the interest rate of 20%. And plus the purchase cost, which is an annual demand of 600, multiplied by unit cost of 0 0.29 plus five divided by Q. This is now the expression for the cost function. And we can try to simplify this, do the calculations. We get here 4,800 divided by Q. We get uh, one half Q multiplied by 0 0.29, multiplied by 0 0.20, 
will give us 0 0.029 Q. We have 1 half Q multiplied by 5 divided by Q multiplied by 0 0.20. This gives us 0 0.5. And we have 600 multiplied by 0 0.29 should be 174. And we have 600 multiplied by 5 divided by Q, which is 3,000 divided by Q. And before we take the break, if we just summarize this, we have 4,800 divided by Q plus 3,000 divided by Q. 7,800 divided by Q. Uh, we have Q to the power of 1, 0 0.029 Q. And we have 174.5. This is now the new expression for the cost with the alternative when you are ordering between 500 and 1,000 units. And then we take a break and you can try to find out how we can use this cost function to find the optimal order size with this alternative. Okay, 15 minutes break and then we continue. Yep. 